Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Couple number one. Hello, I'm Sue, this is my dad Peter and we're from Derbyshire. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Lee, this is Ben and we are long-term friends. Couple number three. Hi, Alexander. My name is Martin. This is Kayleigh, and we are work colleagues from Bridgend in South Wales. And finally, couple number four. You are. Right? I'm Charlie. So my dad, Kevin, and we're from Horn Church in Essex. Thanks very much indeed. These are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. More obscure than a Beatles B-side he's heard of, but you haven't. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. I. Uh... <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hiya. Afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I see we've got a couple of returning pairs on so you can tell sometimes. Uh, Charlie and Kevin. Charlie was getting a bit cocky there. Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Went a little bit cockney. Cocky and cockney? Yeah. All right. All right. That's a first. That's a Horn Church greeting. Apologies. Good. <laughs> Listen, well, that's good. That's good. Hey, you're back on the show. Do you do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> Within reason. Uh, lovely show today. First question, particularly, is a, is, is a nice one. First one is one of those ones, if you know about the subject, you can go very deep into it, get a very good answer. But I think everyone will be able to have a, a pretty good go at the first one. Good stuff. Uh, well, thanks very much, Richard. Now, all our questions on Pointless have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Everyone's looking, of course, to find a pointless answer. This is an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to today's jackpot. Now, Ed and Alan didn't win the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,750. <laughs> OK, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this first round, I'll take an answer from each of you, but there is no conferring. Whichever pair has the high score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so try and make sure that isn't you. OK, our first category today is... Comedy actors. Comedy actors. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, the question concerns TV sketch show actors. TV sketch show actors, Richard. In a moment, Zander's going to show you a list of four TV sketch shows. We need you to tell us the name of any actor or actress who has appeared in seven or more episodes of any of the shows you're about to see. So seven or more episodes of any of these shows, according to IMDb. Very, very best of luck to everybody. OK, so as Richard just mentioned, we're now going to put up four TV sketch shows, and they will remain up the whole way through the round, so all the way up and all the way back down the line. You just have to name any of the actors or actresses who've appeared in seven or more episodes. OK, so here are our sketch shows, and they are Dead Ringers, Little Britain, Not the Nine O'Clock News, The Fast Show. I'll read those one last time. Dead Ringers, Little Britain, Not the Nine O'Clock News, and The Fast Show. Sue, welcome back to the show. You did so well last time. Thank you. I think we had one of the lowest scores of, of, of the whole show was yours, Stevenage. You came up with their home ground. Yes. Remind us what you do, Sue. I'm a retired modern languages teacher. Excellent. Good stuff. What, what were your languages? French and Spanish. French and Spanish. Yeah. OK, good stuff. Now, how are you feeling about these, uh, these TV sketch shows, Sue? Um, I, I think I only know the most obvious ones. Um, I'm going to go with the fast show and say Paul Whitehouse. Paul Whitehouse says Sue. Let's see if Paul Whitehouse is right for the fast show. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. He's right. Eighteen. Eighteen for Paul Whitehouse. Good start, Sue, from the fast show, of course. He's a genius, Paul Whitehouse, I think. He is. Very, Genuinely. He really is, yeah. A brilliant comic actor he is. Lee, welcome to the show. What do you do, Lee? I'm a food and beverage manager from, uh, for a private house in Nottinghamshire. Hang on, for a private... Well, hang on, so private you, house, you buy the food and beverages at home, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> for a private house? What, your house? I manage my own larder. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, listen, it's good. Someone's got to manage it. It's a, it's a mess. Yeah. I'm telling you that out of kindness. But, uh, uh, so, Thanks. hang on, what's a private house? Basically, um, a stately home. We do weddings, functions, things like oh, that. Oh, I see. So, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. How did you and Ben become friends? We met when we were travelling. Um, I was living in Tenerife, moved to Tenerife when I was 19, um, and Ben worked in my local bar. We just became mates, didn't we? 
Good Still mates now? Stuff. Good stuff. Now then, TV sketch shows. Is that good for you? Yeah, I know a few. I'm um, not sure how obscure. I'm going to go with not the 9 o'clock news and say Mel Smith. Mel Smith, says Lee. Let's see if Mel Smith's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said it. It is right. 18 are only score so far. Oh, 20 for Mel Smith. Very consistent scoring so far. Yeah, he's one of the, uh, one of the big stars and not the 9 o'clock news. Was, See, about to, was about to become a bookie before he got that job. Yeah, that's right, his dad is a bookie. Mm, that's right. Uh, OK, now then, Kaylee, welcome to the Hi. show. Great to have you here from Bridge End. What do you do, Kaylee? I'm a checkout runner in a, those local... A checkout runner means yeah. you have to go and find out what, when, when the... Yeah. So you, you are very good, you know exactly where everything is in every Basically, aisle. Basically, I have a walk-in map of my store in my head. <laughs> yes. Very good. Um, let's have a, a, an actor or actress from one of these sketch shows. The only trouble is, I don't watch TV sketch shows, so... Well, one of those you can... You can uh, the only use... one I know is pretty well, it's going to be obvious, it's mm -hmm. um, David Walliams, that's the only one I know. <laughs> David Walliams says, yes. Katie, let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said it. It's right. Only two, yeah, there we are, only two in Little Britain. And uh, 56, there is your... Oh, That's sir. a pretty big score, isn't it? That is a pretty big score. More than Paul Whitehouse and Mel Smith put together for David Williams. Yeah. David Williams is his real name. Uh, now, Kevin. Kevin, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Now, remind us what happened last time. Well, we got to the head-to-head -head and uh, we, we met the heady mix of caviar and nookie bear. Yeah, you were and, whipped. Uh, we were, absolutely. Yeah. How are you feeling about this board? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Not the nine o'clock news is more my sort of time frame. Pamela uh, Stevenson. Pamela Stevenson. OK, well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It is right. Well, 20 is what Mel Smith got. Let's see what Pamela Stevenson got. 25. Twenty-five. Yeah, big name recognition. Also, she appeared in Strictly Come Dancing as well. Oh, Pamela Stevenson, yeah. married to Billy Connolly. Uh, okay, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Eighteen, the best score of that past Sue. Very well done. Peter and Sue looking the stronger for that. Up to twenty, where we find Lee and Ben. Twenty-five, Kevin and Charlie, and fifty-six, Kaylee and Martin. So a little bit of pressure on you, Martin, to find a nice low score in the next pass. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second place please take their places at the podium? OK, Charlie. Hiya. All right. All right, mate. Uh, all right, yeah. Um, uh, now, we are looking for actors or actresses who appeared in seven or more episodes of these TV sketch shows. You're on 25. The high score is on 56, Martin and Kayleigh. Just first, remind me what you do. I'm a student at uh, Nottingham Trent University. Quantity surveying. Exactly. Is what you're learning. Spot on. What, what have you learned so far? How to measure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, use a calculator. <laughs> Two vital, vital things. Life skills. Know. Now, OK, uh, Charlie, Charlie, you want to be scoring 30 or less to avoid becoming the new high scorers. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I wasn't feeling good about this, but I'm thinking outside the box, the narrator of Little Britain, Tom Baker. Oh, he's good. He's good. There is your red line. You're the first person to pick somebody not from the main ensemble cast as well. Very, very shrewd. Uh, below that red line with Tom Baker, through you go to round two. Let's see if Tom Baker's right. Let's see how many people said it. It is right. Through you go. One person said Tom Baker. Very well done. 26 your total, but one our best score so far. Richard. Well played, Charlie. Uh, you're good on the last show. You're doing very well again at this time. Yeah, Tom Baker. He's the narrator, as you say. Left school at 15 to become a monk. He didn't, did he? He did, yeah. He was a monk for six years. And he was Doctor Who. That's the other, <laughs> that's the other thing I know about him. Yeah. Now then, Martin. Martin, you're the high scorers. Mm. Do, so do you work in the same store in Bridge End? Uh, yes, I am one of the Checo colleagues, so... Oh, do you know, know what? Somebody, somebody was, um... <laughs> I don't think someone was filling the bags. It was me, was filling our bags. But I got home after a shop a couple of weeks ago and found that I'd also packed the little spongy thing that the, uh, 
that the, <laughs> oh. that the girl on the checkout yeah. was using. I had that the other day. I was at a uh, supermarket, and I got, it's exactly the same thing. So I don't think it was my fault. I, the, uh, I had the cash register <laughs> in my bag. There's about, yeah. about four and a half grand in it. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, it was all right. I just thought I'd be too embarrassed to take that back because it's so... <laughs> uh, Martin. What are you going to go with? Right, OK. You're the high scorers, by the way, so we need a low score. A bit of work to do here then, isn't it? A little bit. Um, there's a couple I've got in mind. Um, it's from the FAS show, I think his name is Mark Williams. Uh, Mark Williams says, Martin, there's no red line for you as you are the high scorers, but let's see, is Mark Williams right? And if it is, how many people said it? Well, 18 is our only score from the FAS show so far, and that was Paul Whitehouse. Where is Mark Williams going to end up? Two! Look at that! Mark Williams, very, very well remembered, is the word I'm after. 58, Martin, is your total. Well played, Martin. Yeah, the instantly recognisable Mark Williams. He does uh, suit you, sir. He does I'll Get My Coat. He's also Arthur Weasley in the, the Harry Potter films. Ben, welcome to the show. Now, what do you do, Ben? I'm a project manager for a marquee company. Oh, that's fun. So, projects, that mean you actually go out on site. You're, you're there putting up the marquees. Yes. OK, now, there you are. You're on 20. The high score is on 58 and Martin and Kayleigh. You want to be scoring 37 or less with this. Right. Um, I will go with The Far Show and John Thompson. John Thompson, says Ben. John Thompson, here is your red line. Get below that with John Thompson, you're in round two. How many people said John Thompson? Well, a lot of people closely watching this result. John Thompson among them, I should think. Two is what Mark Williams got. One is what John Thompson got. One. Very well done. 21, your total. Not sure how pleased about that John will be. Well, again, it's difficult. Everyone recognises John Thompson. They know him from Cold Feet and all sorts of things. But when you think about The Far Show, has it been in seven or more episodes? It's, and it's got a big old cast, The Far mm. Show. But no, he was, uh, he was brilliant in that. He was on Celebrity Pointless as well, wasn't he? Certainly was. I used to be in the, the same business as Ben way back when. I used to have a, a marquee that I hired out, and I had a big top that I hired out as well. I had to get out of it in the end. It was just too tense. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that is brilliant. You made that up in real time as well. And we haven't taken a... We, we, did, we haven't taken half an hour... I taken half I know, an amazingly, I haven't sat down in a, with a room of writers. No. Just... It's the kind of stuff I can do. It's just... Yeah, it's, uh, it's too... I'd say it's a gift, but it's a curse sometimes <laughs> to come up with that material of that quality. Yeah. In that, in that kind of time. That is brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Now then, Peter. Yes. Peter, you're looking pained. I am looking pained. <laughs> oh, Peter, now. <clears throat> did, you watch, did you watch any of those? Yes. Only one, though. OK, well, that makes it easy, in a way. Doesn't yeah, but the popular answers are going to... Or the answers I know definitely are going to not leave us in the game. I'm going to say Joe Brand. Joe Brand. OK, Joe Brand. Now. Martin and Kayleigh are on 58. You're on 18. You want to be scoring 39 or less with this. Uh, there is your red line, Peter. Let's hope Joe Brand gets you below it. Is it right, Joe Brand? No, no, bad luck, Peter. I'm sorry, that's an incorrect answer. Scores you the maximum of 100 points, and that takes your total up to 118. Sorry. Sorry, Peter. I don't think she's ever been in, in any episodes of any of those, I'm afraid, Joe Brand. Right. Um, let's go through, before we look at the pointless answers, go through some of the, uh, the smaller scoring answers you could have got. So we've already had Tom Baker on Little Britain, but Anthony Head, who of course, plays the, uh, the Prime Minister on that, would have scored you one point. Would have been a good answer. And Ruth Jones would have scored you two points from, uh, you yeah. know, from Gavin and Stacey. Yep. Uh, on the Fast Show, there's a few low-scoring answers. We've already had John Thompson for one and Mark Williams for two. Simon Day would have scored you two. Charlie Higson would have scored you two. Carolina Hearn would have scored you one point. Appeared on lots of episodes of, of that. But let's take a look at the pointless answers in uh, a few of these categories. Colin McFarlane, uh, who's General Pierce in Torture, but he's been in lots of episodes of The Fast Show. David Fox, who plays Dicky Bubble in um, Little Britain. The great Paul Putner, Steve First, also uh, from Little Britain. Both of those would have been pointless. Phil Cornwall from Dead Ringers, one of the main impressionists on that, and Kevin Connolly and Mark Perry as well. All of those are pointless. Rhys Thomas, been in many episodes of The Fast Show. Uh, Robin Driscoll's been in The Fast Show. He's one of the guys who co-created and owns Mr Bean, Robin Driscoll. That's some money, isn't it? That's oh, yeah. Mr Bean money. Yeah. Yeah. Rory Jennings from The Fast Show and Steve Benham and Sterling Gallagher from Little Britain. All of those pointless answers. Very well done if you said any of those. Let's take a look at the, uh, the top answers, the ones that most of our 100 people said. Pamela Stevenson is third with 25. 
Then Matt Lucas with 35, a long way behind David Williams on 56. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, so at the end of our first round, the pair will be heading home with their high score of 118. I'm so sorry, it's Peter and Sue. Um, 18, lovely low score in the first pass. And Peter, you had to take a bit of a punt there. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you know any of those other answers, though? No. Well, there we are. That's some consolation, at least. Uh, I'm really sorry we have to say goodbye to you now, but it's been great having you on the show. Thank you both Thank so you. much for playing. Sue and Peter, lovely contest. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And so now only three pairs remain. Well, that was a great round. Lovely low scoring from all three pairs there. So very, very well done. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is literary characters. Literary characters. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns literary couples. Literary couples, Richard. We're going to show you six literary couples on each pass. You just need to tell us in which novel did they first appear, please. It's going to be 12 novels to guess at home. Very best of luck. Thanks very much. We're looking for the novels in which these literary couples first appeared. And we've got on our first board Dexter Mayhew and Emma Morley, Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara, George Emerson and Lucy Honeychurch, Max de Winter and second Mrs de Winter, Philip Pirrip and Estella Havisham, and Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele. I'll read those one last time. Dexter Mayhew and Emma Morley, Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara, George Emerson and Lucy Honeychurch, Max de Winter and the second Mrs de Winter, Philip Pirrip and Estella Havisham, and Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele. There we are, uh, six literary couples. Now then, Lee, how do we feel about this? Not bad. Um, I know half of them. I think I'll go with um, Philip and Estella and say great expectations. Great expectations, says Lee, for Pip and Estella. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. It's right. 33. Not a bad start there, Lee. 33 for Great Expectations. Yeah, a good start, obviously, by Charles Dickens. He had to write that weekly rather than monthly, which was what he normally did to save his magazine. His magazine was doing rather badly all the year round. It's the name of the magazine. So he had to write it super quick. Well, he did, he did very well under pressure. He did all right. It's not bad, is yeah, it? Not bad at all. No, not a bad book. Yeah, well done, Charles. Not if, you're, bad. if you're watching. If you're watching. Well done. <laughs> yeah, good. Kaylee. Hi. Kaylee, how do you find this board? Better than the last one. <laughs> um, I'm not too bad with these. Um, I'm probably going to go with Max De Winter and the second Mrs. De Winter because it was made into a film and f it was called Rebecca. Rebecca, says Kaylee. Rebecca for the De Winters. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Rebecca. It is right. 33, our only score so far. Will you go lower than that? Yes, you will. Quite a long way lower. 10. Very well done, Kaylee. Yeah, played by Laurence Olivier and Joan Fontaine in the film Rebecca. Thanks very much. Now then, Charlie. Charlie, how are you feeling about this? This was the one subject I did not want to come up. OK. Um, OK, do you want to just maybe even have a guess at any of them? Come well, down the board? Well, I would have said um, the Chronicles of Narnia for the Rebecca answer, so I'm glad that was taken. <laughs> I, did, I did know Great Expectations, um, and I believe the clue is in the name of Christian Grey and Anastasia Steele. I'm going to say Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, says Charlie. Let's see if that's right for the bottom one. Is it right? How many people said it? It's right. Very well done, Charlie. Once again, you reason your way out of a corner. 24 for Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, yeah, very good answer, E.L. James. How did your audition go? Um, I'm waiting to hear. I got a, I got a, I got a call back. But, so, um, did you? Yeah. You'd be terrific. And who are they thinking of for Christian Grey? <laughs> uh, uh, let's go through the rest of these answers. Uh, do you know that top one, Dexter Mayhew and Emma Morley? It's a more recent book. It's that book that everyone's read that was made into a film. Yeah. Which is by David Nichols. Yes. And it's, it's called. called 
one day. One day, one absolutely. Day. Would have scored four points as well. It's a terrific answer. Best answer on the board, actually. Rip Butler and Scarlett O'Hara. Gone with the wind. Gone with the wind. Yep, a much bigger score at 59. Uh, George Emerson and Lucy Honeychurch. Oh, no, another... I do exactly. It's room with a view. It's a room with a view. Absolutely right. Very well played. Five points if you said that at home. Thanks very much indeed. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Ten, the best score of that pass, Kayleigh. Very, very well done there. Then up to 24, where we find Charlie and Kevin. He's good, isn't he, Kevin? Oh, Charlie. Unbelievable. Very, very good. Um, and then up to 33, where we find Lee and Ben. Not miles ahead, but Ben, we need a low score from you in the next pass. Otherwise, we'll be saying goodbye to you. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more literary couples on the board. And here they are. We have got Ralph de Bricassart and Maggie Cleary, Fitzwilliam Darcy and Elizabeth Bennett, Winston Smith and Julia, Leopold and Molly Bloom, Edward Cullen and Bella Swan, Heathcliff and Cathy Earnshaw. I'll read those again one last time. Ralph de Bricassart and Maggie Cleary, Fitzwilliam Darcy and Elizabeth Bennett, Winston Smith and Julia, Leopold and Molly Bloom, Edward Cullen and Bella Swan, and Heathcliff and Cathy Earnshaw. OK, remember, we are looking for the names of the first novels to feature these literary couples, Kevin. Yes. Well, Charlie's left you in pretty good stead there. Yes. You're on 24. The high scorers on 33 are Ben and Lee. If you can score eight or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. Unfortunately, I can answer one, but it's going to be a bit of an obvious one, I think. And even though it's only because I really liked Kate Bush when I was uh, in my teens. It's Wuthering Heights, Heathcliff and Cathy Earnshaw. Wuthering Heights, says Kevin. Wuthering Heights, here is your red line. If you can get below that, you're through to the next round. Let's see if Wuthering Heights is right. Let's see how many people said it. It is, of course, right. 53. Yeah, that is a high score. Takes your total up to 77. A big score. You know when Kate Bush got to number one with Wuthering Heights? Uh, she was the first woman in chart history to have a number one single that she wrote and performed herself. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Martin. Yes, sir. Martin. You're on 10. Mm. Lovely low score from Kayleigh. Yeah, she did all right. She did very well indeed. Now, Kevin and Charlie on 77. If you can score 66 or less, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Mm, yeah, well, much the same as Charlie. It wasn't a topic I fancied literature, because I tend not to read many novels or books. But uh, I've fallen in lucky with a swim, to be honest with you. Um, Winston Smith and Julia is from Orwell's 1984. 1984, says Martin. 1984 for Winston Smith and Julia. There is your red line. If you can get below that with 1984, you're in the head-to-head. -head. How many people said 1984? It's right. You've done it. Very well done. Ten. <laughs> Ten, taking your total up to 20. Well done, Martin. You're in the head-to-head. Yeah, well played, Martin. Great work on Podium 2 from both of you there. Yeah, George Orwell's 1984. Uh, now then, Ben, you're the last person to have this board. Do you fancy having a, 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 a stab at any of these? No. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, I'm quite poor when it comes to this subject. So the only one, if it's right, would be uh, Fitzwilliam Darcy, um, Sense and Sensibility. Sense and Sensibility says Ben, for Fitzwilliam Darcy and Elizabeth Bennett, you're on 33. The high score is still Kevin and Charlie on 77, so a score of 43 or less will see you into the next round. There's your red line. Is Sense and Sensibility right? How many people said it? Bad luck, Ben. I'm afraid an incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 points, takes your total up to 133. I think they might be the most famous literary couple of all. Do you think Fitzwilliam Darcy and uh, Elizabeth Bennet? Yeah. Uh, it's not Sense and Sensibility, it's Pride and Prejudice. It was the Dashwood sisters in Sense and Sensibility. Uh, amazingly low score. 26 for Mr Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet. Uh, now, the rest of these, you'll know a few of these. Do you know Edward Cullen and Bella Swan? That's probably less in your uh, comfort zone. Twilight. Ah. So a lot of people at home would have got that, I'm sure. 27 points. In fact, more people got that than got uh, Mr Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet. Leopold and Molly Bloom, you'll be... Uh... That's um, James Joyce. Is it Ulysses? Ulysses, Ulysses yeah. Good. And would have scored you two points. And do you know the top one, Rafe de Bricassart and Maggie Cleary? Cleary. Well done to anyone at home who said the Thornbirds. Five points for the Thornbirds. If anyone got all six of those, it's very, very impressive. 
lots of different genres there. Mm. But 26 points for Mr. Darcy. Extraordinary. Colin Firth will be furious. Yeah, yeah, he will. He said, if I get wet for nothing, he'll say. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our second round, I'm afraid our losing pair is Ben and Lee on 133. Well, not a bad, not a bad stab in the dark there, but uh, I'm afraid we say goodbye to you now. But we'll see you again next time. We'll look forward to that very much. Ben and Lee, thanks so much for playing. <laughs> Great contestants. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for our head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Martin and Kaylee, Charlie and Kevin. You are one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,750. So, to decide who gets to play for that money, you're now going to go head-to-head. -head. The big difference is, of course, you're now allowed to confer, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Uh, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns... Famous Yorkshireman. Famous Yorkshireman, Richard. I think all Yorkshiremen consider themselves famous, don't they? just by dint of being born in Yorkshire. But we're going to show you five pictures now of famous men born in the county of Yorkshire. Can you tell us the most obscure of these, please? OK, let's reveal our five famous Yorkies, and here they are. We have got A, B, C, D, and E. There we are, five famous Yorkshiremen. Uh, Martin and Kaylee, you get to go first because you played best throughout the show. Right. I need a way. <laughs> I know you. And um, see. I'm you? trying to remember what the um, big is. Oh, you start in the little man. You can win. We'll have to go with C. Yeah. Uh, we'll go with C, and uh, it's Alan Bennett. C, Alan Bennett. Alan Bennett, say Martin and Kaylee. So, Charlie and Kevin, talk us through the board. Well, we know A. It's obvious, Michael Parkinson. We know E, because that's Harold Wilson. B, he's on the tip of my tongue. He, he was like a wrestler and an actor. He was in Kez as, as the teacher, but I can't think of his name. We'll have to go with E as Harold Wilson, I think. It's, it's uh, going to be hard to beat C. OK, you're going to say E, Harold Wilson. So Martin and Kaylee are saying Alan Bennett for C. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Alan Bennett. He's right. <laughs> 27. 27 for Alan Bennett. Now, Kevin and Charlie have gone for Harold Wilson, E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Harold Wilson. Where's well, right? 66. As you suspected, Alan Bennett, hard to beat there. Uh, Martin and Kayleigh, very well done. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, well played. Let's clear up A first. Obviously, it's Michael Parkinson, but a very big scorer, so uh, wouldn't have done you any good. Would have scored 85 points. Very impressive. Now, Kevin, you're absolutely right about B. He used to be a wrestler called Leon Aris, the man from Paris. Uh, he was in Kez, uh, done all sorts of adverts, all sorts of things. Brian Glover yeah. is his name. Brian Glover. 11 points. I'm sure everyone recognises him, but the, uh, the name was tricky to come by. Uh, now, D, D is a pointless answer. He's won five Oscars. Do you know who he is? John Barry. Yeah, John Barry. He did the Bond theme, Born Free, all sorts of things. John Barry, born in New York. Uh, OK, here comes your second question, and it concerns... Ancient cities. Ancient cities, Richard. I'm going to give you five clues now, each of which relates to a different ancient city. Can you name those cities, please? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five clues, and here they are. We have got... Now in modern Jordan, used as a film location for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The Inca city standing at 2,340 metres above sea level. According to legend, a giant wooden horse was dragged through its gate. Seaport of ancient Rome that stood at the mouth of the river Tiber. And the capital of southern Mesopotamia, famous for its hanging gardens. I'll read those one last time. Now in modern Jordan, used as a film location for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Inca City, standing at 2,340 metres above sea level. According to legend, a giant wooden horse was dragged through its gate. Seaport of ancient Rome that stood at the mouth of the river Tiber and the capital of southern Mesopotamia, famous for its hanging gardens. There we are. Five clues to ancient cities. Charlie and Kevin, you need to win this question to stay in the game, but you do get to go first. OK. Well, I think I know all of them but one. The one I think would be the lowest... 
I am not 100%, but mm -hmm. I will go for it and say Machu Picchu, Inca City. Machu Picchu, the Inca City. Machu Picchu. Martin and Kaylee, talk us through the rest of the board if you can. Yeah, if we can, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> not sure of the first one. Uh, I think they might, the lads might have that second one correct. Um, and there's Troy, and I should know they want Roma because I've recently come back from Rome, but... Um, and the last one is bad one, so um, I'll take Troy, we'll take Troy. You're going to say Troy, the uh, wooden horse dragged through its gate, Troy. So we have Machu Picchu, we have Troy. Charlie and Kevin went for Machu Picchu, let's see if that's right, let's see if it's enough to get them through to the next question. It's a good score, 26, very well done Charlie. 26 for Machu Picchu. Martin and Kaylee, that's what you have to beat with Troy, the ancient city which had a wooden horse dragged through its gate, according to ancient legend. OK, let's see if Troy's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It is right. Has to beat 26, though it's not going to 69. Well done, Charlie and Kevin, that's what you needed to do. You're back in the game after two questions, it's one all. Yeah, I think you knew you were onto a loser there. Charlie proves his worth again. Let's take a look through these. Now, you would have won the point with the, uh, the one in modern Jordan uses the location for Indiana Jones. Petra. Petra, yeah, would have scored 11 points. Uh, the one at the bottom, you're absolutely right, is Babylon, but would have scored too many points, would have scored 59. There's literally not a single trace of the Hanging Gardens left anywhere. There's like, not even an archeological trace of it. So the, it's only accounts of it that, uh, that remain. So no one even knows what, what they look like? No, they've got an idea what they look like from descriptions. They were sort of terraced gardens, essentially. Uh, and the seaport of ancient Rome, this is somewhere you can visit the archaeological remains anyway of it. Uh, it's about four miles upstream now, and it's Ostia. Would have scored you four points. A terrific answer if you got that at home. Well done. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so it comes down to a decider. Here comes your third question. Whoever wins this, obviously, it goes through to the final. It concerns... Champions League winners. <laughs> Champions League winners. Richard. I'm going to show you five winners of the Champions League now, but in anagram form. Can you unscramble them and pick the most obscure? Whoever does that is going into the jackpot round, so very best of luck. OK, let's reveal our five Champions League winners in anagram form, and here they are. Odd Mr Oasis Tunrub, Red Admiral, Vila Polo, My Urbane Chin, and Leeches. I'll read those all again a second time. Odd Mr Oasis Tunrub, Red Admiral, Vila Polo, My Urbane Chin, and Leeches. Now, Martin and Kaylee, you go first this time. Right, OK. Do you know any of them? Because I haven't got a clue. <laughs> yeah. I know most of them. Let's just go with the one that perhaps is the... Obviously, trying to find the least. Oh, dear me. The top one, Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund, say Martin and Kaylee. Borussia Dortmund. Charlie and Kevin, talk us through the board if you can. Chew them over a little bit. I'm just going to choose Borussia Dortmund. Yeah. Have you got any others? I've got Liverpool, obviously. But um, Real Madrid as well. And I guess we'll go with... Um, you got the bottom one at all? No, can't work it out. Oh, yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea, yeah. We'll go with Bayern Munich, my urban chin. You're going to say Bayern Munich, my urban chin. So Bayern Munich plays Borussia Dortmund, or rather Borussia Dortmund plays Bayern Munich. Martin and Kaylee have said Borussia Dortmund. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. It is right. Five. Wow, five for Borussia Dortmund. That's, that's good. That's what you have to beat, Charlie and Kevin, with my urbane chin, Bayern Munich. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. It has to go down below five for you to win this point. It may do... Oh, ten! Very, very well played, Kevin and, Ch uh, and Charlie. But... Um, You've been pipped to it. After three questions, Martin and Kaylee, you are through to the final 2-1. What a terrific head-to-head. -head. Well played, both teams. There's the best two answers up there as well you've just given us. Uh, nothing you could have done against Borussia Dortmund. Red Admiral is a rather lovely anagram of Real Madrid. That would have scored you 56. Vila Polo, which is Liverpool, 
would have scored you 44. And as you worked out, Bleaches uh, is an anagram of Chelsea. And that would have scored you 68 points. It's the biggest answer up there. Thanks very much indeed. So I'm afraid the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Charlie and Kevin, but that really doesn't reflect what a heroic performance you've put in today. Really very, very good indeed. Particular commendation to you, Charlie, across Super. the board. Thank you. You've well shown done. yourself to be a, a, a fantastic opponent. Brilliantly played, brilliantly played. Uh, it's been great having you on the show, both shows. Charlie and Kevin, fantastic contestants. Thanks, Thanks so much. But for Martin and Kayleigh, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Martin and Kayleigh. You've beaten the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,750. Well, you've done incredibly well. Lovely scoring all the way through. That incredibly tight head-to-head, -head, though. Uh, but you came through smiling, so very well done. Kaylee. not just at work in Bridge End, also here, it turns out, you know all the answers. <laughs> yeah, right. Very impressive. Now, to win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. First, thing, you have to find a category, and here are your five choices. They are tennis stars, famous verses, international prizes, film writers, and award-winning musicians. <laughs> well? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Famous verses? No, oh, no, I'm, I'm rubbish at literature. I can't be doing no, literature. No, don't do film writers either. The National Prizes, that's going to be Pulitzer Prizes, mm. that's going to be stuff like that. Don't say no. What about tennis stars? Are you any good at tennis stars? Give it a go, is it? Don't say that, no. I don't know. <laughs> tennis <laughs> don't stars. Put the pressure on me. <laughs> tennis stars? Yeah, go on then. Tennis stars. Tennis, tennis, tennis stars, stars you're going to go yeah, for. Yeah, okay, here comes your question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many male tennis players who have been top five but never number one as they could. Richard. Yes, the nearly men of world tennis. Anyone who has been number two, three, four or five in the world rankings but not number one since the rankings began in 1973 all the way through to October 2012, please. Any of those male tennis players, very, very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £2,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Right. Yep. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Let's go right back, is it? So you've got um, the old ones, like Ilona Stasi, Bjorn Borg, and uh, yeah. um, there was an uh, American called Stan Smith, Arthur Ashe. Um, there are um, Kevin Curran, uh, Richard Krejcik. I'm thinking about Wimbledon winners now. Yeah. Like that. Um, uh, whether they got to number one, if they got to number one, we don't want to open them. But um, uh, some of the old ones, oh. some of the new ones, they probably they will probably know, I know the new ones. ones. I only know some of them. Like ones Murray were like there, them. and the Dal is there. Oh, Nadal's been number one. Right. Yeah. Um, so is Fedras. You can't mention yeah, any Yeah. Right. Okay. What about like Andre Agassi? I think he was number one. What about Greg Kukatsky? Oh, well, he's been top five. Don't know. Might be worth a plant outside shot. But I don't know. Tim Henman. Um, they did see it, so they yeah. know that one day. Um, Ten seconds Richard, left. Richard Krejcik, um, um, Pat Cash, and Kevin Curran. Yeah, you couldn't go back there. Yep. Right. Okay, your time is up. So we were looking for male tennis stars who've been in the top five but have never quite been number one. In fact, never exactly been number one. I now need your three answers. Uh, Pat Cash. Pat Cash. Uh, Kevin Curran. Kevin Curran. And Richard Krejcik. And Richard Krejcik. Of those three, which do you think is your best shot at a point? Um, the best one, perhaps <laughs> Richard, Chris, Richard Krejcik. Richard Krejcik will put last, and you're least likely? Uh, Pat Cash at the top. Pat Cash. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got Pat Cash, Kevin Curran, and Richard Krejcik. So we were looking for male tennis stars who've been in the top five but have never been number one. Your first answer was Pat Cash. This is your least confident shot at a pointless answer. Remember, only one of these has to be pointless for you to win that £2,750 jackpot. So let's see how many people said Pat Cash. It was right. That's the main thing, it was right. Uh, now, let's find out, is this going to go down to zero? Because if it does, you will leave here with £2,750. It's still going down, look at that, two! Very well done. Wow. <laughs> That's a great answer, isn't it? <laughs> Two. Mm. 
fantastic. Sadly, we're only interested in pointless answers at this stage of the game, but still a brilliant answer. So only two more chances to win today's jackpot. £2,750. What would you do with that, Martin? Um, I love my sport. Um, and my partner would kill me for this. I'll probably put a little bit of a way to, to uh, take a, a Lions trip down under the Watch the Lions against uh, New Zealand, I should imagine. Excellent. How about you, Kayleigh? I'm going on a holiday in a couple of weeks, so it would be nice that to have some spending money. That would be Very good indeed. OK, well, you've got two more chances to win that jackpot. We're looking for male tennis stars who've been in the top five but never number one. Your next dance was Kevin Curran. Pat Cash scored only two. If this score's lower than that, there's only two possible scores it can have. One of them is very exciting indeed. OK, so it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. For £2,750, let's see how many people said Kevin Curran. Well, it's right. So, as I say, Pat Cash took you down to two. If Kevin Curran can take you all the way down to zero, you will be leaving here immediately with £2,750 on you. Down it goes, still going, you've done it! Very well done indeed! <laughs> that is brilliant, Kevin. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Very, very well done indeed. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, congratulations. You, <laughs> you didn't think that was going to go anywhere no. near pointless, did you? That is fantastic. Kevin Curran was a pointless answer, which means you leave here with a jackpot of £2,750. Very well done. Very, very well done indeed, Martin and Kayleigh. Well, that was the dream category, Martin, wasn't it? It was perfect. As soon as they came up, I could see uh, you had eyes for nothing else than uh, tennis stars. Yeah, Kevin Curran uh, was number five in the world in 1985, same year he was in the final at Wimbledon. Terrific answer. I think you could have gone on naming, uh, naming for these tennis Curran. stars uh, uh, all day. Richard Krychek, who reached number four in the world in, uh, in 1999, also a pointless answer. Oh, get in! Let's take a look at a few more. There's plenty of them for any tennis fans out there. Um, let's look at a few. Uh, David Nalbandian, the Argentine, was uh, a pointless answer. Goran Ivanisevic was a pointless answer. Joe Wilfrid's Songa reached number five in uh, 2012. Great answer. Uh, Michael Stick, the German. Nikolai Davidenko, Petr Korda got to number two in the world, the Czech. There's Richard Krychek. Robin Soderling, the Swede. Sebastian Grosjean, the Frenchman. There's a few others. Uh, Yannick Noah would have been a pointless answer. You could have had Todd Martin, Reiner Schutler, Nicholas Kiefer would have been a pointless answer. Jonas Bjorkman, Guy Forger would have been a pointless answer, as would Henri Leconte, uh, Ivan Lubacic. Plenty of pointless answers out there. Very well done if you've got any at home. And congratulations, guys. Terrific end to a terrific show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Martin and Kayleigh, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,750. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>